Next, we head up north to San Francisco, where Information Society lead singer Kurt Harlan works for a video game company. Kurt is a sound designer at Crystal Dynamics. To make sure we get past security, we send a production assistant ahead of our crew. So she's going to go across the bridge into Crystal Dynamics, penetrate the door, and wait in the lobby for us. I'm sorry, she's going to penetrate the door. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we already have people looking. We have a problem. Oh my gosh, it's locked! Okay. Straight through the lobby. Right. You're going to turn right, make your way to the back of the building. That's his office. Hi, Kurt Harlan. Hey. Hi, my name's Amir. Hello, Amir. How are you, sir? Pure energy. Oh, by the way, I I'm from VH1, and these are my friends. We're with a show called uh, Bands Reunited, and we've been uh, sent on a mission. That mission is to reunite the members of this fine band, Information Society. My skepticism grows. I, I don't believe you have Paul Robb here because he wouldn't do this. Okay, well, let me explain. We're going to get you guys in the same room. I hope you don't. I don't want to see Paul. I need, my, I need my penguin. Bring the penguin, and then the next night, get you on stage for a one-time-only special performance in front of your fans. So are you in? I don't know. Do I have to commit to actually being in the same room with Jim Cassidy again? Yeah. Madness. Are you in? Um, what am I doing? You are getting back together with Information Society. And I have to perform songs? Yes! Do I get time off work? Yes! Am I paid for them? What were the other questions? You're in? No. Well, are you, you're in. I need to hear it. Do I have to sing Running? You can sing whatever you want. I'm gonna do some Van Halen covers. Are you in? Yeah. He's in! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Harlan is in. Yeah! Kurt did what none of the rest of us could. Kurt was the star, and there's no question about that. And what happens here at Crystal Dynamics? Crystal Dynamics is a company that makes video games, so I do sound effects and music for any and all of the games that come through the company. What were you guys thinking when you wanted to put a group together? Was it more of a musical act, a performance act, a hybrid of the two? There was much more than just wanting to record some music. We wanted to be intellectual semi-pop sounding experimental electronic music, which in 1982 in Minneapolis was pretty unusual. How did you become the lead singer? Yeah, I didn't want to be. Um, I was the only one who could sing with a damn. And I wasn't very good, even, even then. Paul and Jim didn't want to, they didn't want to try to do that. So they kind of made me do it. What about the uh, recording of this album, the first album? Uh, what was that process like? Tommy Boy, had, they really liked the single that they picked up from us running. And they said, okay, now make an album. And we finished that in late 87. It was supposed to come out right then. And then the sampling issue hit. So for years before our album came out, uh, I was sampling uh, Star Trek and other shows. That was the very early days of sampling. It was no legal precedence for what you do when you sample people like Leonard Nimoy. We never dreamed that putting recordings of Star Trek could ever matter because we're just this group of dorks from Minneapolis doing music. In retrospect, it turned out to be a, a, a good thing because it was a hook that we could, you know, hang the whole thing on. What was that like to make videos, especially at a time when it was, you know... It was uncomfortable for me. Really? They were new experiences for us, and uh, I found it to be a very tense situation when you have 10, 20, 30, 40 people worried about everything happening right, and um, it was tense. Describe your shows. What, what were they like, whether it was in a club or in a, in a big stadium? I don't know. We never did the type of show I wanted to put on, not since the early, early, early days in Minneapolis. Paul and I had a lot of trouble figuring out and agreeing on what kind of show to do. We just did the best we could. Things kept happening to us to push us more pop, more pop, more pop. Um, and eventually, Kurt couldn't take it anymore. Is that safe to say that you shared power? No. Paul and I were in a kind of permanent power struggle with each other and the older we got the better we the more mature we were the better we got at being able to just try to get stuff done instead of argue about whether we're going to do it his way or my way jim would tend to kind of wait for us to stop fighting so we could just get some work done <laughs> for which i always respected him now the other interesting dynamic to the band was that you and amanda had a relationship for a while did you not mm-hmm and how did that affect the structure of the band decisions being made? Did, did it factor in it at all, or...? There was always the temptation to make comments that, well, you just said that because she's your girlfriend, which would the next day be, 
you just disagree with her because she's your girlfriend and uh, Amanda was I think the first to leave the incarnation of the band that we're putting back together again the, the band that recorded the first album tell me your side of that and and how that came about um, anything I could tell you about that would be from my personal life and I'm not willing to make that crossover even the uh, the way in which the decision came about even that the whole thing has too much personal resonance for me and also I have no way of knowing how much and in what way anything was divulged by anyone else and I don't want to go there Jim Jim nor Paul got into that they were like you they, they probably were... feel the same way it, if anyone's gonna say anything it's up to Amanda to, to talk about it or no one right and if she did then then you're done <laughs> Okay, fair enough. A little too sensitive for me. I, I understand. Uh, by the time you got to uh, recording Peace and Love Incorporated... Welcome, welcome to Peace and Love Incorporated. What was the subsequent tour for that album like? So that tour was mostly about us continuing to play shows and thinking about whether we wanted to do it anymore. And Paul decided he didn't want to. And what about the status of Jim? Oh, well, if Paul was done, Jim was done. Really? Yeah. And you decided to carry on with the name and... Yeah. Did they wind up selling their portion of the name or their rights to the name to you? Is that what happened? Uh, information yeah. side? Um, we wrote up a little agreement that said, I get rights to the name, they, which they give up in return for a percentage of any money I might make using the name. If you could just tell me where these people might be to help us with our mission, it would be very helpful. Do you know where we can find Amanda? The last I heard she was living six months out of the year in Connecticut and six months in London, but I think that changed to 12 months in London. What do you think? What are your thoughts going into the reunion and the concert? I think it's a bad idea. Why? I just think it's going to be very unconvincing for everyone involved. So there's still some drama left in this little show of ours. Hmm. Kurt's in, but not convinced. Now we must find the elusive Amanda Kramer. When Bands Reunited returns, we finally get the truth about Amanda Kramer's exit from the band. They were all very upset about it. They decided to kick me out.